Hey there, I'm Jamal Green and welcome to Across Utah 2022. I'm right outside Zion National Park and getting ready to set out on a four to five week trek to Green River, Utah. Let's go. Zigzagging through these white cliffs. Looking back to where I came from, I camped right up on that ridge last night. See all the way back down to Zion over there, that's East Temple. You can see poking up. Looking back down this Slick Rock Bowl I just climbed up, you can actually see the pink cliffs way out there. Actually you can see part of Bryce way over there. Looking over to Zion. So this cool patch of slick rock is known as the White Domes. Pretty cool area. Oh hey, it's Mr. Shadow. Hey Mr. Shadow, how you doing? You enjoying the White Domes? Let's walk down through the white domes here. Pretty amazing stuff, huh? Quite the sundown tonight. Now if this wind would just stop, it'd be a happy camp.
big rock dome out there is called the Beehive. Evidently, you can climb up it from the backside. But we are not going to do that today. You can see the white cliffs out there again. It's kind of where I'm headed. I'm headed up that valley, and then I'm going to break right and up towards the East Virgin River and into the barracks. Back to walking in Crocs. Crocs with socks, no less. If we're going through this deep sand, actually, I prefer them. Much lighter than the heavy boots. Goodbye, French Canyon. Hello, barracks. That's a river. Looks like a nice spot for a dip. If it's a little bit warmer, I might do it, but not today. back at one of my favorite rock art sites along the barracks. Check it out. That is cool. This whole wall is covered. The big bare hand is one of the noted glyphs at this site. All right, morning of day six. Had a good camp here overlooking the East Virgin River. And today we need to continue following the White Cliffs to the east and get to our cache that we didn't get to last night. And then keep going. It's a long ways to Green River. All right, let's go.
bad. No water for Jamal. Oh. These two are probably the best. Day 11, Lone Rock, headed north. Taking a dip in the Perea. It runs with Maria. Okay, as nice as this is, it's time to get back to hiking. Let's go! Views are looking pretty good.
them. The sounds of nature. <laughs> uh. How's it going, Mr. Bird? You having a good day? Hop, 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 hop. It is a good day. It's a good day in Death Hollow. Might be my favorite section right through here. Check out the nice arch up there. Looks like a pretty nice sight. All right, day 16, up behind the natural bridge. tell but I think there's a little uh, granary up there yep that's a little granary
Wolverine Canyon is just one big undercut arch after another. We had that one down there. And then this one. And then this big one up there. That's awesome. Look at that sky, very cool. Okay, a little bit farther and then we gotta find a camp. Alright, we better get back to hiking. Still have a long ways to go to Green River. It's that way. It's a lot of stepping up and stepping up, but nothing too bad. I haven't had to take the pack off yet. Looking down on the water pocket fold, Capitol Reef National Park. Where I'm headed, down in that gully. Okay, day 20, let's keep it going. Okay, we have a Great Basin gopher snake here. Doesn't seem to be too active. I feel more like I'm in the Sierras right now, not southern Utah. So amazing with a nice bubbling creek, these nice big pine trees, smell of pine in the air. It's really nice. This was unexpected. I didn't, I really didn't expect this uh, pleasant creek, but it's quite pleasant. Uh, so I climbed up this hill downstream and found a bunch more rock art. 
Lots of bighorns. And lots and lots of more bighorns. Okay, here's the first obstacle on, on the northern part of the traverse. This big dry fall. Gotta pick your way up through the talus slope and then across. It looks super sketchy from here, but I'm hoping it's not gonna look as bad when I get up there. This really is a beautiful area. It's nice. Some work though. We have reached the infamous Butt Crack Canyon. Check it out. I say, I thought the crack was going to be a lot larger. I mean, even this is going to be tough with the big pack. It's going to take a little bit of work, but definitely doable, I think. I mean, it has to be. <laughs> Okay, we are nearing the top of the butt crack. It's a slow process. And this isn't even with the pack. gonna be tough with the big pack. I'm having to push this up just like three feet at a time and then chimney up to it. But it tips so the whole time I have to kind of keep a hand on it to make sure it doesn't tumble all the way down the butt crack. Success. Man and all gear are atop the butt crack. Oh man, <laughs> that was a lot of work. That was tedious. All right, let's go a little bit farther and then we're gonna call it a night in camp. It's pretty cool. This is where I'm gonna make home. Just a little flat area next to a couple pine trees. Got some water filtering. And should make for a happy home for the night. Good morning. It's day 25. I've already climbed up 
this chute right here to get to the saddle. Looking back, you can see some of the peaks I was at several days ago, but no more looking back. Let's look forward into our next canyon. This is called Blow Sand Canyon. Let's get down there, check it out, and keep going along the traverse. over to the Golden Throne. All right, we're going up over the saddle now. Okay, goodbye Blow Sand Canyon. Into a new canyon, which has no name. We a very steep descent. are dry. Okay, here we go. Chalkstone action. Hope I don't jinx it, but it doesn't look too bad. Okay, I'm down, but now I have to get the pack. I left it up on top of the rock. I just ran into. What you doing? Mr. Bighorn is following me. What I was hoping to be true, why he's hanging around, is there's a big water pool here. So I got me some water. See, the water pool. I'm pretty sure that's what Mr. Bighorn wants. Go get it, buddy. Get you some water. I know you want it. Those are my foot tracks right there. He forgot to filter the water. Is that good? All right, buddy. I'll see you later. Look, he, he came to check me out. He went around the corner and came right there. How you doing, bud? You can't figure me out, can you? I gotta go. Okay, got around the slot by going high and I think it's gonna work out. Here I need to get around that high point up on the right.
morning of day 26. Starting off the day with semi-sketchy dry fall and bypass. I need to get up over here to the left and then walk those high ridges above to get up on top. Here we go. Okay, that's one of the scariest things I've ever done. That was a sketchy route. I'm gonna turn around the camera and show you. So I just edged my way across that right there with a fatal drop below. Man, I scouted it for a while trying to determine if the low route, a medium route, or a really high route was the best way to go. And I, it was a toss up. Oh man. <laughs> All right, I hope there's nothing else like this. Cause I wanna get this puppy done. I gotta get to my cash, I'm running out of food. Okay, let's go. Uh, yes. Day twenty seven. Now, ferry down the top of option B. Doesn't look good either. The first time ever, at least in a long time, I don't know where I'm going tomorrow. <laughs> I'm gonna look at some maps and see if I can figure out a plan. All right, that's it. Checking out for day 27. Okay, I'm up the bench on top of the dry fall and looking right up the crack. This first bit of boulders looks like the hardest part, actually. So we'll see, see if we can get past it. All right, so I went ahead and scouted ahead without the big pack and climbed way up there. I think it's doable. I think we're gonna make it happen. It's a few tricky spots. I'm gonna have to lift the pack up a few times, but Nothing too sketchy. Oh, I love it. Looking back on where we camped last night, way down there by the spring. Okay, let's suit up and get back into action. Climbing up through these fins, trying to get to the next level of rock. So far, it's been a tedious task. Yay, finally up through the pine tree gully. And we're almost to the top.
really awesome. We have to figure out how to get across this canyon and over that little saddle. Maybe I'm just hungry, but that looks like an ice cream cone to me. And three hamburgers. Mm. down to a pretty cool landscape. Probably too dark for this, but check out this campsite. Love it. Talk about a room with a view. Okay, time for some dinner and some sleep. is coming finally made it to the road now oh, but the wind is still bad it's not the best hiking weather million dollar view looking down on tip of the sun on the left and the Temple of the Moon on the right.
Ever since the top, I hiked those slopes up there around the hoodoos, came down over here. I knew the crux would be here at the very bottom because there could be like a 20 foot cliff and it would make it impassable. And I couldn't see that from the top. And here we are. A gully that's totally doable. We're gonna be able to get down and see the Temple of Sun and the Temple of the Moon. There they are. They're waiting for us. Yay! Down on flat ground again. Happy Jamal time once again. That's the moon, that's the sun. We have an awesome view looking back at the temples, but now we're at a feature known as Glass Mountain. And the wind is back. Okay, all bundled up in my tent. <laughs> I found a semi-sheltered place and uh, got my tent up as fast as I could. I think it could start raining any minute, but uh, Actually, I thought that a few times today and I was wrong, but uh, anyway, I'm glad to have the tent up and I already boiled some water, so I have a hot meal ready to go and we'll see. It's so hard to believe I'm freezing and it's Memorial Day weekend, <laughs> you know, late May and freezing in Southern Utah. All right, signing out, day 29. I'm leaving Capitol Reef for the ninth and final time of this hike. My route has just zigzagged inside and outside the border for the last week or so. But now we're on to the San Rafael Swell where a whole new batch of adventure awaits us. All right, let's keep it going. Day 30. This is crazy. The driest, hottest portion of my hike. And I'm stuck in a snowstorm. I can't believe it. Oh my I need to keep moving. You know, it's a long ways to Green River. I'm a lot closer than I was, but I'm still a long ways away.
Day 33 and we are in the middle of the chute of Muddy Creek and we are getting ready to go down through the deepest, darkest section. All right, let's go. sediment flow where you can kind of find high ground. Oh, but I don't see it here. Walking down the chute. Walking down the creek. Definitely the deepest, darkest section yet. First step. Getting deep. Okay, we've hit critical level. Oh. I'm just trying to keep my uh, back of my backpack out of the water. Oh, it's deep. I think we're gonna have to float it. Here we go again. Floating the pack this time. Just have to make sure she doesn't tip over. I can across Utah. I love it. All right, onward. We are approaching the famous log jam up ahead. This is the narrowest part of the chute. sunshine so we can warm up. Ah, the canyon is opening up a little bit and the sun is shining. It's so good. I can't believe it, but I just saw two elk. It seems like the totally wrong environment for elk, but uh, 
yeah, sure enough, I was walking down the creek and scared this big animal in the brush and I saw it get up and run away. And I thought, wow, that's an elk. But then I thought, okay, that had to be a cow because it just made no sense to see an elk. But then it crossed the creek about 50 yards in front of me. And sure enough, it was an elk and hopped into the brush. Confirmation elk, hard to believe, but a very cool moment. All right, that's the word for now. In the drying session, everything dry. The deer flies have been biting like crazy along Muddy Creek. It is awful. I actually enjoyed being in the narrows because there's no deer flies in there. They seem to like it in the sunshine. So every time I cross one of these sandy benches, I just get attacked. I can kill probably a dozen of them at a time. Had to stop and make a wardrobe change. The deer flies are just too bad. So I had to get out the long sleeves and the, and the pants. As I'm moving down the creek, they're just getting worse and worse and they're just swarming. I hate them. I hate them so bad. <clears throat> Something going down on day 33. I'm beat. I am very anxious to be done with this canyon. I think we're done with this canyon. Check that out. It's a pronghorn. I don't see many of those on my hikes. Hey, Mr. Pronghorn, how you doing? They are all dry. Everything's dry. So unfortunately, today is going to be the last day of the hike. I have less than one liter of water left and really no food left. So it's kind of time for me to call it quits. I'm fairly close to the highway, so I'm going to hike down the canyon a little bit more and then ditch out to the highway.
Okay, I'm officially walking away from the reef now. Headed to the highway. I can even see the cars up there whizzing by. So the hike is all but over. Bum bum bum. I'll say it now just in case I don't get another chance. It's been another great hike across Utah. And as always, I thank you for following along. Cheers. yet I'm back that's right I got a full belly of food and I washed my clothes and I am back to finish this hike as intended all right let's go so yeah it's early October now and I am right back to exactly where I ended my hike in June so from here, we're looking at three or four days through the San Rafael Swell to end the hike properly. All right, let's go. What a difference a season makes. As I ended my hike in June, it was so dry. And now I've already seen several pools of standing water. So the question is, is this day one or day 38 as a continuation of the Zion to Green River hike as planned? I think I might just go with day 38 just to have the full continuity. Well, this is a lot of work. I'll tell you what, my legs are telling me it's day one, not day 38. <laughs> several chutes here one could go down, but I picked what looks to be the easiest. It's still not as easy as I would like. Okay, we gotta get down to the bottom.
All right, finally made it to the bottom of the canyon. Now, time to find a place to camp. I'm beat. Okay, morning of day two, or day 39, depending on how we're counting. I made it down to the bottom of lower end of Erdley Canyon last night after the long, crazy descent. Started up there at the top, came halfway down and then skirted this way, and then back to the bottom. And now today I'm gonna work my way all the way up the canyon. And what is usually a dry canyon, today is gonna be wet because of the recent flooding. So it's probably gonna make the going a little bit slower than normal. This is definitely what I call a boulder fest. It's slow walking through here. Oh boy. Oh, we're definitely getting wet now. Oh man, I did not expect this. I knew there could be some deep water through some of the narrow sections, but I wasn't expecting a pool like this so far down. As long as she doesn't tip. Success. As long as I can get the pack up through that. All right. Day two, day 39, either one you want. <laughs> oh, it's so hard when you can't see what you're walking on. These boulders are so uneven through here. Slick. Have I mentioned yet how slick it is? <laughs> it's slick. Yep, it's slick. Right. <sighs> it's so slick. I go up that way. Okay, I'm gonna have to climb that. Well, bad news. I cannot get past this obstacle. It's too tough. I, uh, the swimmer to get over to that platform and then I couldn't find a way to get up through that rabbit hole. It's too tight. And then to swim over here, that limestone is too slick. So I can't do that little three to four foot climb out of the water and up that slope. And what's even worse news is that as I was trying all that, I lost my little wearable camera, which really just sucks because I had some good footage on that. I don't care about the expense as much as just losing the footage really bummed me out. So anyway, I need to get out to the sun and warm up because I've been swimming around. I was looking for the camera under the water. It fell into probably five, six feet of water. So anyway, I'm going to get out to the sun, see if I can warm up, maybe find a bypass up and around. It's my only hope because otherwise I'm going to have to go back and back up that crazy climb and find another way around. <sighs> Anyway, it's a report for now. Oh, Can't believe I'm doing this twice. Oh, 
Oh, it's still cold. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my back threw me away. What a mess. What have I got myself into this time? Oh man. <laughs> oh, I was not about to lose a second camera. Oh, I can't believe that thing tipped over. At least it's uh, uh middle of the day, so I can dry some stuff out. When I camped in the same area two nights in a row. What a mess. Okay, let's get the shore. It's so hard swimming in waterlogged hiking boots. What a day. Maybe this is a sign I was not to finish this hike after all. I'm not giving up yet. I'm going to just bypass Erdl and go up north. Oh, one way or another, right? If I have to totally turn around, I will. But I'd like just some easy hiking for a day or two. Okay, let's go see what's ruined. I can't tell you how happy I am to see these big red buttes, the northern end of the San Rafael Reef. It means I'm gonna finish my hike the way it was intended. Okay, headed for Lower Black Dragon Canyon right out there. down in the canyon. And again, out here in the middle of nowhere, looks like it's a birthday. Happy birthday to somebody. Back up on the rim and on our old back road now. Headed down.
getting good. Getting down to the good stuff. Canyon walls are on fire. Okay, we are in the lower end of Black Dragon Canyon and we're about to go check out a really cool rock art panel. It's actually the second time I've been here. I came here long ago with my mom and my dad. It was a good little trip. And as many of you know, I lost my dad unexpectedly last year and it sucked. That's why it was so important for me to come back this way on my big hike and finish my hike as intended to come back by this spot just to kind of relive that memory and as a little bit of a tribute to him, I guess. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the rock art as much as we did way back when as a family. And yeah, that's the word for now. Let's go check it out. All right, I climbed up from the wash down below. There's rock art all along this wall, but this is the Black Dragon. The Black Dragon itself for which the canyon is named. Very cool. And there's some more large barrier style glyphs right here. Those guys out. A lot of this rock art is believed to be barrier style, so that's about a thousand years old. Some of the glyphs on down, though, are from the archaic peoples, which could be from as long as 8,000 years ago. So there's really a mix of type of art at this location. Pretty amazing. of day five or what would have been day 42 had a great camp here just east of the reef i got to watch the moon go down and the sun come up this morning it was great so today is the final day and what i would have been doing on this day would have been walking a boring walk to green river about 10 miles east of here but instead on this bonus itinerary i'm going to do something more exciting i'm going to walk south all the way down the reef and see some exciting stuff along the way all right let's wrap it up and let's go Okay, into the line in this canyon, but there is a nice double arch up there. Bunny rabbit doing right there. Don't run, Jack Rabbit. Bye, Jack Rabbit. 
How crazy cool is the San Rafael Reef? Very, I would say. Okay, I'm getting ready to leave the reef behind and go cross country to my Jeep. It's probably gonna be dark by the time I get there and I don't expect any more excitement. So I'm gonna go ahead and say my goodbye for now. I've had a great time trekking across Utah this spring and this fall. I hope you've enjoyed the journey. As always, I appreciate you for following along and I'll see you next time on Across Utah. Take care.